Good morning, you guys. I'm out in the garden. I'm about to do just a quick little water and I saw something really cool that I just wanted to pop in and show you guys really quick because I don't know if it'll wait until my next garden tour. Look at all of these tomatoes that are ready. So they go, they need to be gotten today so I don't know where they will be at oh and look at this the dinner plate Dahlia isn't that gorgeous love it some smaller varieties and then over here we have what is what I thought was a beefsteak tomato when I planted it, but this certainly isn't a beefsteak size, it's more saladette size, so. Ooh. I've gotten a couple cherries already, but man, this is exciting. Anyway, what I really wanted to talk about today, I don't know if you see my little friend flying around. Now that I'm not sidetracked by ripe tomatoes, what I really wanted to talk about today was actually pollinator and butterfly gardening, because I think that's just such a fun thing to do. Um, a lot of the same things that you can use to draw butterflies and pollinators into your garden are also herbs that you can use like in herbal ways too. So they kind of have multiple ways that you can use them. And so I kind of want to show you around and talk to you about that. So if you're new here, I kind of put, have dedicated my front two garden beds as my pollinator, herb, and butterfly gardens. Um, although you can see probably around that I do mix in flowers everywhere else as well. Not to mention that they really love the flowers of vegetables and plants like this little zebra longwing has been loving the cucumber flowers and I see them on the cucumbers all the time. So I guess my first tip for getting a lot of butterflies into your garden is to plant a lot of flowers and plant a lot of flowers that attract the butterflies. So I'll go around and show you some of my favorite varieties. And I do want to say before I do that that I know I'm being kind of more about butterfly gardening here but there are tons of other pollinators that even though they're maybe not quite as desired like moss because they will lay worms on some of your food those are definitely pollinators too um, so there is more than just butterflies and bees and the fun ones that you think of but there are all sorts of little creatures pollinating your garden all the time so in this first bed i have different variety of herbs um, that attract bees and butterflies. This is um, flowering and bolting um, cilantro, which I'm gonna let go to seed and save for, um, I believe it's coriander, um, coriander seeds. And then we've got, some of the stuff hasn't quite come up yet, but like this is echinacea. Um, we have borage in the back there. A zinnia this is a zinnia so zinnias are some of my favorite flowers for butterflies I honestly tend to find zinnias to be one of the main attractors of butterflies to the garden that and Mexican sunflower which I will show you in a second but I'm just gonna finish showing you this bed first then we have over here by the zinnia we have anise hyssop which is a beautiful flowering herb from the mint family, which attracts all sorts. You can see a little, little guy on it right there. And then we have some chamomile and this is bee balm, which is not flowering yet. Sage, which this can flower as well. And then we have marigolds, which I find butterflies on as well so i have a lot of those and then sunflowers which i find the bees to really love more um, and then lavender in the back 
So while those are some of my favorite varieties for attracting, one of the main things that you really wanna have in a butterfly garden, if you're butterfly gardening, is the food for the caterpillars, what you would call your host plant, which is where the butterflies will lay their eggs and the caterpillars will So eat. this particular plant is called a milkweed plant. Um, and this is the main and only, I believe, food source for monarch butterflies. So if you want to have monarch caterpillars um, in your garden and be able to raise and release monarch butterflies, you're going to need to have milkweed growing because this is what they will eat. And honestly, host plants are gonna be far more important than the flowers because the butterflies can find a lot of flowers anywhere. But what they need is a way to reproduce and continue growing their population. So if you really wanna help have a butterfly garden, make sure you're providing food and host plants as well as the nectar plants. So you have your host plants, which are the ones for the caterpillars, and you have your nectar plants, which are the flowers and provide nectar for the butterflies after they've emerged. Another thing that I want to say about if you're growing milkweed is that make sure if you live in a warm climate and you find that it's not naturally dying back on its own, that you strip it of its leaves and cut it to about six inches above the soil um, so that it encourages the monarchs to continue on their migration and not stick around trying to reproduce and create more babies here. Um, so I live in North Florida. There is a native population in South Florida, but here it does get cold. Um, well, maybe not cold like it blew it up north, probably where some of you are at, but um, colder than in South Florida, <laughs> for sure. So definitely if it's, so it doesn't necessarily die back here, but I still would probably do better to cut it back. It also prevents the carryover disease into your next season that can harm the health of the monarchs as well. So like I said, this is kind of a, a really informal conversation about it. So I'm a little scatterbrained, but some of my other favorite flowers for pollinators are calendula. They're also an herb that are great for healing skin and making skin oils out of. In addition, there's lavender over there. Um, bees really love, this is borage, these blue flowers and purple flowers I really find um, bees to really love more than butterflies, but bees are still very important too. This is a trailing rosemary that is starting to flower. Aren't those so dainty and beautiful? Um, so there are a little lot of little buzzing creatures in this this bed at the moment. Some more calendula. Um, have some strawberries up here and then this is bee balm which bees also really love when it goes to flower as well. You can see I have another zinnia up here. And this particular plant is called fennel. Now this is another host plant that I have in this bed. And this plant in particular really attracts swallowtail butterflies. Um, so this is another host plant. You can eat fennel as well and harvest the bulbs when they're ready and use them in salads. Um, the seeds are very good for aiding in stomach digestion and making fennel tea after meals. So it's really good for that. And it's also really good for your black swallowtail butterflies. So the great thing about a lot of these different host plants and nectar plants is they also can be aromatic herbs that really serve multiple purposes and have multiple ways to use them in your garden, which I think is so great. This is hyssop officinalis, so it is also a medicinal tea. It kind of has um, a licorice aroma and flavor. Even if you roll, run your hands across it, you can smell it um, so easily. And fennel also has a very kind of licorice um, flavor and smell to me as well. We have oregano down here, which also can flower and be beneficial to your pollinators. And then echinacea, which is also really good. This one hasn't quite come up yet. Um, good for your pollinators. So echinacea, just like a lot of these other plants, is really medicinal, um, really good for flu and viruses and helping with um, colds. The leaves, flowers, 
and the roots are all edible. You would just make a decoction from the roots or make a tea out of the flowers and you see I have more herbs and flowers placed strategically all throughout my beds because the more you have and especially these ones together the more that they're together the more eye-catching they're going to be for butterflies and pollinators to easily and quickly find your garden and find where that that they can find food so that's a zinnia this is a nasturtium I've seen um, hummingbirds actually really like nasturtium and red nasturtium I've seen them sticking their little beaks in there um, videos of that this isn't blooming yet but this is a bachelor button that is also an herb um, it's more bitter herb or cornflower is another name for a bachelor button and it can come in really bright blue or purple colors and just has a bright flavor uh, color that you can't really find in a lot of other flowers and then here is another beautiful zinnia and then we have your dahlias which these ones have opened up because they're a smaller variety to show pollen and so these ones do get some pollinators but the really big dahlias take a while to fully open up and so those don't always attract as many a pollinators when it's a really big variety like the dinner plate one I showed you in the beginning of this video. So here among the tomatoes we have another little marigold um, basil will eventually flower if you let it and that is also bees really love basil flowers. And then we have our beautiful sunflowers which attract all kinds of pollinators as well. So that's just a regular sunflower. It's a multi-headed variety. I don't remember the particular um, name of this one off the top of my head because it came from a mixed flower package of seeds. Here's another one. I want to say it's Autumn Beauty is the variety. Aren't these so pretty? That one's kind of going. is, oop, I just scared off a bee, <laughs> is the Mexican sunflower, which I find bees and butterflies both really, really love Mexican sunflower or otherwise called Tithonia. Really, really beautiful, bright, bright orange flowers. I just love that. And it's so easy to start seeds from. Here's a, here is a pink little bachelor button, and this is what they look like, but they come in different colors. Isn't that so cute? So cute. An orange nasturtium. There's some more zinnias here. A lot of these haven't really started blossoming yet. Marigold. But when they do, there will be flowers all along these vegetables, which also a lot of them serve as great companion plants for as well as Oh, here's another great pollinator that I see right here. This is called a Cosmo. And I find pollinators really love this one as well. There's another zebra long wing. See, they love these cucumber flowers too. And with them being on the trellis, it makes them so easily accessible for pollination, which is also really amazing. I love that. This is my first year of vertical gardening and I think that's a really nice benefit. So I don't have an example of it, but a great host plant for the zebra long wings is actually passion flower vine. Um, I'm, I'm guessing one of my neighbors must have a passion flower vine because they're all over my garden and I don't have any sort of host plants, but I find zebra long wings out here all the time. Another um, great host plant for Giant swallowtails, which are those giant, beautiful yellow ones, are citrus trees. They really like to lay their eggs on citrus trees. Um, and also for the black swallowtails, I know I mentioned fennel earlier, but they also love a lot of the plants from that whole entire family. Um, dill, carrots, parsley, any of those things that you leave growing in your garden um, serve as really great host plants. So don't be surprised if you end up catching some little caterpillars on your carrot plants because they really love to lay their eggs 
and use those as a host plant. So just to sum it all up, if you really want a lot of pollinators and particularly butterflies in your garden, make sure that you are having dedicated nectar and host plants for those butterflies and make sure that you're planting them together so that they're really easy to see and noticeable. Um, make sure you have a lot of options and varieties for different types of pollinators to go to um, and just really have fun with it and intersperse and plant them in between your vegetables. Like I said, a lot of them serve as great companion plants for vegetables and a lot of the same pollinating plants that um, butterflies and bees love are also really great herbs to use in cooking and teas and tinctures and different things that you can use medicinally in your home as well. So I hope that this has been helpful. I really feel pretty strongly about um, making sure to plant you know, flowers and things for our pollinators and really supporting the ecosystem in that way. Um, plus, what is more beautiful than just walking around your garden and seeing just tons of butterflies and little buzzing bees flying around. I think that's so much fun and makes it all worth it when some of your crops aren't doing well and things are going wrong. At least, you know, you can look around and it can still be beautiful and bring you joy. So. I hope that helps and I will see you guys soon. And I actually will just leave you with some videos of some of my favorite butterfly experiences and some captures of caterpillars that I've had so far this year in the garden. So I hope you enjoy them and I'll leave them here at the end.